we're going to look at uh, how to simulate a covering of snow on an existing object. For this purpose, I'm going to use the um, this little hut we see on the screen. And what we're going to do is we're going to put some snow on this roof here. So first of all, we need to be able to select the item that we're going to cover with snow. If I click on the item at the moment, it's uh, going to select the whole of the group of the item. So I'm going to press control on the keyboard and click on the component that I want to modify. So I've isolated this section of roof and we're going to go ahead and look at editing the material. At the moment, there are multiple layers and, and combinations to produce a, a mossy um, shingle roof. But what we want to do is we want to create a new ecosystem. And I've already prepared earlier, as we say in England, a, a sphere. This is just a view native object. It has to be one of uh, the view natives for the meta blob to work. So I'm going to load this sphere into the ecosystem and we're going to look at some of the settings. Let's see what happens at the moment when we populate this sphere. So we can see we've got a bunch of a bunch of balls on the on the roof. That's no good for us. So we're going to look at how we can control this and how eventually we can make it look like snow. So first of all, if we go through all of the settings, we're going to look at the density because at the moment the, the spheres themselves are sitting on the roof. Um, which is fine if you want a very, very thick layer of snow, but for my purposes, I'm going to drop these items down and I'm going to click proportional to the size of the instance and I'm going to drop that down to about 50%. So we're going to get hemispheres sitting on the roof. Let's have a look at that. So that's better, they're sitting down lower, but at this moment in time, they are far too large. Uh, and far too much space in between. Remember, eventually, this is going to be a meta blob. Now, for a meta blob to function, uh, the items within the meta blob need to be fairly close to one another, if not touching or even overlapping. So we're going to change the scale initially, and I'm going to drop the scale down and see what we get. There's nothing scientific about this. You can see now we've got lots and lots of different spheres scattered over the roof and I'm going to change the proportion to two. What's going to happen there is we're going to range everywhere from the original size of the sphere up to twice the sphere's size and we'll try populating. So you can see in the preview we now have a range of different sizes but again we still have far too much um, space between the blobs. Now, for my purposes, I really want it to look as though the snow has slumped down. So, of course, the guy who lives in this hut has got a fire, so heat gathers at the, the apex of the roof, so this snow is going to melt. So I'm going to adjust the presence of those spheres. I'm going to make them populate down to about just over halfway. Let's see what happens now. So you can see now we've dropped down from the roof, I think, a little bit further down because it is quite steep up there. So as the snow melts, it is going to fall down that roof. Let's populate again. OK, that's better for me. But it's too straight a line here. So maybe we're going to change the fuzziness of the top. In other words, its view is not going to interpret this as a, a clear dividing line. There's going to be a degree of fuzziness. So you can see now we've got a less straight line. So we're now going to go back to the density and let's increase the density of these spheres. Remember, we want them to touch or overlap. Populate. I'm going to get a little bit more because we're still not getting the, the density that I require. I don't want too many spaces between these items. Let's just check our settings. I may bump that up a wee bit and populate. Again, this is trial and error because every object that you have is going to behave differently in this situation. And I may need to bump this up quite high. OK, so now we're up to 715. That's possibly a few too many. We don't want to overload our systems. 413. Yeah, we've got a good covering now. 
So now at this moment we have an ecosystem, but we need to change that ecosystem into something which we can use to create a meta blob. So now we're going to click on paint. Remember, this is not a dynamic ecosystem. That means we can click the paint button. So the eco painter dialog box pops up. Now we're not going to do any painting. What we want to do is click the second button in from the left, which says select ecosystem instances. So we're going to click that. We're going to select all of them. Now at the moment, yeah, we've got the, the spheres selected, but we want to manipulate those spheres and we want to change them into objects. So you'll see now in the dialog box down here that we now have an awful lot of spheres, but they're all selected. Leave them selected to make your life easy and go straight to object and create meta blob object. So what Vue has now done <clears throat> is he uh, Vue has merged all of the items together to create a single object with a quite a nice organic feel. Let's go ahead and do a preview render of that and see how it looks. Preview render. So now you can see the, the scene rendered. We have lumpy, bumpy blobs of snow. We need to do a little bit of work on that because at this moment in time we have uh, snow popping through the fascia boards of the building. So I'm going to look at this either inside or, or plan view, zoom in, and I'm just going to squish this meta blob down so that the snow no longer protrudes through that fascia board. And I'm going to do the same at this side because you never know if you're going to rotate this building. Okay, so now we have, hopefully, no snow popping through the fascia board, looking good. One of the other little things I like to do to, um, to make the scene a little bit more believable, especially on this top edge, is I'm just going to squish this meta blob down. So what's going to happen is the snow is just going to gradually uh, sink down into the roof uh, and make a better edge along the top, maybe a little bit more. That way we increase the, the randomness of that uh, line at the top of the meta blob where it meets the roof. And we'll do another quick preview render just to see how that looks. Much better. You can see we've got a much more random arrangement of snow. It's gradually creeping out towards the top of the roof. And we also have a little bit of snow overhanging this uh, longitudinal fascia board, which again looks quite nice as the snow is slipping down and would eventually drop down to ground level and onto this little roof here. Obviously, one of the problems we have within this meta blob is there's an awful lot of instances that Vue has to deal with. In an ideal world, if you have the facility, I would right click on the meta blob and I would bake that to polygons. Once we've baked it to polygons, Vue will see this as one single object. At this moment, we've got the best part of 4 million polygons. Let's reduce that down. About a million should be more than sufficient. 973 will do nicely, and we'll bake it. Remember, the purpose of this is to reduce the loading on our system, reduce the number of instances that Vue has to deal with as the scene progresses. OK, so now the meta blob is baked to polygons. It's one single object. It makes our lives a, a lot easier in terms of memory usage for the software. And we ended up with quite a nice result, which is old snow melting, slumping down the roof and gradually dropping off the edge of the roof. I hope you found this useful. Um, please uh, refer to YouTube, Facebook, etc. for further updates for view tips and tricks. Thank you. Bye-bye.